Hey everybody, I'm Doug Keeling, and today we're going to look at how to compose an album cover in Photoshop. So a friend of mine has a band called Reverie Reloaded, and they asked me to create an album cover for them, and they had sort of an idea in mind. Their first album was called Alpha, and the second album is called Beta, and so uh, we're going to work in the beta symbol into this photo. We found this photo and kind of liked how that looked, but we basically don't need anything uh, as far as the top goes or anything over here. We're going to just use kind of this uh, lower left-hand corner. So here you can see the image that we started with here, this corner of that big image. And I'm just going to walk you through basically the various layers and so forth that I added to create the final outcome. So the first thing I did was go through here and take out a few things like this idol here, whatever you want to call that. And I got rid of the diver over here on the right. And uh, so we just kind of cloned some things out of there, used some content aware uh, fill and so forth to, to mask all of those things. So then we actually added the beta symbol. So it's the uh, beta Greek letter and we extended this a little bit as well, put a little bit more of a tail on it. So we tried to square this off sort of with the squares here on these pedestals so that we could get the right perspective as we did that. And then I set to actually adding some texture into that. So I just got uh, sort of a gravelly uh, ground dirt texture, made it really small, and started layering that in there at various angles that would match the beta symbol. Now we're going to have some light. The whole idea is to have light protruding from the bottom of this or emanating from the bottom of this. So we've got that. Then I just added a color layer over top of that to color that and make it look like it fits a little more under the sea. So we've got that colored. After that, I started adding some streaks of light that are going to shoot out of this. So we went ahead and, and uh, added some brush strokes, did a quick motion blur vertical there at like 90 degrees to get that going. And then I basically just went in and added a bunch of uh, gradients or brush strokes and just kind of extended things out. I used the uh, tools over here for blurring and and smudging and so forth and then added in a few more of those so just building up the layers as we go so those are the streaks I called those and then why I finally added some more of like an outer glow here around the edges just to soften that now initially I was thinking that we'd just leave this as kind of a you know this white bluish color and the the light shooting out would be would be white and jointly as we were working on this together they said you know it would be kind of neat to have more of a lava effect so we get to that a little later but as far as you know looking at this and trying to sell this as an actual crack in the earth uh, from the sea floor you, you need to give it some context so the first thing I did was go through and add some fish so in this case if I just undo a few layers you can see that I basically just copied this fish up here and put it down here and then because we've got light shooting from underneath we've got to add some light uh, to the underbelly of the fish and I went and did that again just to make it a little more vivid now the color doesn't really match very well so after I had added several fish I uh, put a color overlay over the top of that and that's just a solid layer to again just uh, kind of match everything here to the rest of the image so once I had those fish I also decided hey we should add some sharks so I added a shark in as well now again this is not colored so you can see that this shark layer has quite a few different overlays and adjustments to it so if we turn all of these off on this shark so this was the initial shark with the color that came from the photo that I took it from and uh, again I just went over that with some brightness and contrast curves and then I started to highlight the underbelly of it a little bit and add some streaks and so forth and put a little light in front of it so it looks like the lights you know passing around it as well so that was my first shark duplicated that and put another one up a little ways at a different angle a little bit further in the background and then like I said with all of these added a color overlay to just make that blend in so once we got to this point we decided um, that you know it, it would look better with some more of a, a lava idea going on in there 
So this is the after. And what I did here basically was just add orange and yellow and do that in a way that uh, would kind of overlay. So a lot of these are just overlays. Uh, so there's some color burn layers in there. Um, and it's just a matter of adding the yellow and orange over top of that white and trying to pull out some of the actual texture here that we could grab from the initial texture I had laid down. And then also putting that on the fish as well. So we got to this point and we thought that looked pretty good. So it came time for the actual text overlay. So the first thing I wanted to do was put Reverie and Reloaded down here. So we went ahead and added some gradients. Now it, it looks a little heavy handed here, but I uh, wanted to make sure that we could really make the text pop on this. So I imported the logo and then we went right to work in terms of making this um, stand out a little more. The client said that they wanted this to be more of a, like a gold uh, chiseled kind of a text. So we added our bevel and emboss, added a bit of an inner glow to that, a gradient overlay, and if I just turn this, you can kind of see what we wanted as far as gold. It's just kind of a darker gold to a lighter to a darker again. And that gave us sort of the gold. And then we did a drop shadow, which is actually more of a glow. So we did that for both. And then finally added some glares. So if you're ever doing anything with like a, a gold effect, you know, you can get a pretty decent effect with just the bevel and emboss and tweak things a little bit to, to make it work. But if you really want to sell the idea of gold, you have to add those reflective or shiny spots that are really going to sell it. So it's just a matter of adding these really cool, uh, you know, light flares and I just drew those in and copied and pasted and moved them around so that you get those shiny white areas throughout. So here's another look at the process from start to finish. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a breakdown or walkthrough of something that you know I've already done in the past. It's a little different than a standard tutorial, but it's not always convenient, especially when you're working with a client or someone right there with you to be recording everything you're doing along the way. So. Again, hope you've enjoyed this. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe consider sharing it. And definitely think about hitting that subscribe button so that you can be notified of more videos in the future. All right, I'm Doug Keeling. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.